Hi, you guys, and welcome back to my channel. I'm so happy that you're here. Today, I'm going to create with something a little different. This is by Dress My Craft, and it's called Trance For Me. And these are kind of like decals um, that are a little bit different than the average. Um, this one's wooden backgrounds. This one is uh, brick tiles number one. And then I have bees and flies. And um, I got these on scrapbook.com. And this is the journal that I'm going to work in today. I haven't shared or showed this journal much love lately. So I wanted to find a page in here that I could create on. And I chose the very first page in the art journal which is so not like me. It's kind of scary to do the first page in your journal. I don't know why. It's just um, kind of scary for me. And I chose to do a half page spread today and we're going to use these products. And um, I have some products that I'm going to show you and they didn't even work for me. So um, I'm going to show you the positives and the negatives of the products that we're going to use. First, I was trying to decide kind of a layout of the page, and I decided, like I said, on a half page, and I'm going to do it the first page in this art journal, and this art journal is um, one that I made out of watercolor paper, and I can try and link the um, video above. It's by Lolly Mill and she shows you how to do a really cool art journal and I like it a lot. This is some um, mixed media tape that my friend Debbie gave me and it is a little sticky and I'm just going to use it to block off that page that I don't want to get all full of ink or paint or whatever we're going to do. Taking a little bit of the stick off by putting it on my sweater there and I'm just going to line it up with the edge. Now, um, when I started this video, it was on a Monday, and I'm finishing it on Tuesday, trying to get it um, out of the way so I can have it up for you on Thursday, and I cannot wait to get out and put some mulch down in my yard, so that's my plan. Okay, so I'm opening the package, and um, I'll also, um, try and link a video for you by Vicky Papano. She's from Greece and she um, uses this product too and she makes some amazing things with it. I'll try and link that at the end for you. Check her out. She is really, really good at this. And um, of course, this she gave me the idea on how to use this. So um, hers turns out totally different than mine, but I do use some of her techniques and thank you Vicky for showing us how to work with this product. Now when I cut it apart I'm like well that's kind of silly because we're going to put this upside down so that's not going to work. I'm thinking how am I going to do this now? And you'll see um, that I figure it out. You have to put it on upside down so that the actual image will come off on your paper. So I tried to rip it to give it a um, ripped edge instead of a cut edge, and that's not going to work. I tried several times, and I couldn't get it to rip. So I'm just going to go with it, how we have it here. I'm going to flip it over. And I'm going to put that one piece on the top. And then I'm going to cut another piece for the bottom. Um, I'm just kind of winging it. I wasn't sure exactly what this project was going to look like. But I know I wanted to use this because this stuff has been in my stash for quite a while. And I want to buy a few other things. And I um, try not to let myself do that if um, I have a lot of things that I haven't used. So I'm kind of just laying it out and seeing how it works. Now there's a clear plastic on the front. You pull that off and then it's a little bit sticky, not too sticky. And then you put it down on your um, project where you want it. And I was just giving it a little 
uh, rub there to put it into place. And I thought I would do one piece at a time because, like I said, I've never done this before. This is just plain water. And you go ahead and squirt the water on there. And as you can see, you can just kind of see the image uh, through the paper there. So it's kind of like an image transfer, but it's much, much easier, much different. And um, like I said, just a new product, new product to me. I don't know how long it's been out on the market, but I think it's pretty darn cute. So, or cool, not <laughs> cute. So you pull that paper off being careful not to rip it and um, you kind of get the feel for it after a little bit and it reveals that really cool wood grain pattern there. Isn't that sharp? Very neat. I'm just smoothing down some of the bubbles with my finger and I'm going to just dab up some of the excess water and I'm just using a um, towel there. Well, I notice after a little bit that that towel had a bunch of paint on it, so um, I had to get a new one. Okay, just giving it a little rub and making sure it's sealed down correctly. Now we're going to work on the bottom here, and we're going to go ahead and do the same technique on the bottom. I just wanted to add a little bit more of that wood grain for my um, art journal page here. Go ahead and pull the plastic off. I'm seeing if I can save that side piece of the uh, image there. And there's no way I'm not going to be able to do that. So I'm just laying it down, pull the plastic off, and just giving it a little bit of pressure there and smoothing it out. And we're going to add some water and do the same way as we did it on the top there. Add the water. All right, and I'll link these products below for you if you need to um, check them out. Like I said, I got them on scrapbook.com. There are a ton of different designs. I just got these three, and then I got a few for my girlfriend Kathy for um, her birthday, which was in March, and we haven't gotten to play with them yet. So pretty cool. I think they're really, really neat, and then I'm um, being kind of bold and ripping it off instead of um, pulling or sliding it off, but um, it works out just fine getting rid of the mess. And I'm definitely going to save the scraps because there's a lot of good scraps left over from that large sheet that we had. And these are nine by 12 sheets, I believe. So you've got a lot of great transfer product there. So what next? I wanted to um, kind of get rid of those harsh edges by putting down a little bit of gesso on the art journal page. And my gesso was a little bit too light. So I end up going with a heavy gesso and that works out just fine for me. I think I will speed it up here a little bit and you'll be able to see that. So going super fast here, giving it a little dry, adding down my gesso, and then we're going to go with that heavy gesso, like I said. And my heavy gesso is by Liquitex, and I absolutely love it. I use it all the time. It just, it just does what I want it to do. So here I'm going to switch, and I'm just using a brush and going over those edges so that it's not so... Um, you know, just a cut edge on that side. I wasn't sure how the background was going to turn out. So um, I also decided to give that middle portion that is white a coat of gesso. So now you can see that that looks pretty good. And giving it a dry again. Filling in that white area with my gesso and my soft brush. Now we're going to um, think about some type of focal point. And as I'm drawing this, I'm like, okay, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Well, I was thinking of a great big, huge flower. Now this is a flower from a napkin. And I have a video that I can 
um, show you. I made something else with it, a mixed media project. And what I did off camera is just went ahead and cut that out very carefully with my scissors. I'm going to put it down with my matte medium, making sure that I have a really, really nice um, medium to thick coat on the back. And here I'm just showing you how I want to prop up my art journal here with another book because it was um, the first page of the book and it was just hanging there and it was really giving me a hard time. So I'm giving it, like I said, a medium to a thick layer of matte medium to put that really delicate tissue um, paper flower on there. And this, I believe, is a dahlia flower. And I have dahlias in my garden. Um, I'm just planting the tubers this next week because we've had cold weather here and they are not to be planted in the cold ground. So I'm hoping that I get those in this next week. So very carefully, this is a napkin, like I said, you have to be very careful because it will rip in a instant. So take your time and then make sure you go from the out, the inside out with your matte medium and make sure you have plenty on your brush because um, you know that there's a very fine line from being able to get this down to ripping it. And we've all done it if you work with napkins in your mixed media art or your art journals or even on your greeting cards. There is a fine line before um, you have put it down and you've worked it too much. So I'm trying to tell myself, stop 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 well it's very hard to stop i don't know why but you just want to keep covering it up and i do rip it a tiny little bit right down here but i think i can fix it well enough with my finger and i just have to stop so next i think i'm going to off camera put a little bit of that same um, flower up in the right hand corner to balance the page and this has to be dry of course so there it is I put that on the um, right hand portion just to um, like I said balance it and I'm going to cut that little bit of napkin off of that piece of tape so that I have a clean edge there and when I pull that tape up, it will um, be nice um, and clean on that edge. Now I'm going to use my Burnt Umber in Liquitex. And this is a transparent ink. And Burnt Umber is one of my favorite, favorite colors. Now, I'm not sure what this is. I think it's a Nutcracker. I bought two of them at a rummage sale for 50 cents. And I'm using it as a um, opener for my jars of paint. And it works really well. Sometimes um, I can't get those paints open because I don't take very good care of them and I don't wipe them off when I'm done using them. So I'm just going to go ahead and put some of this brown um, ink, like I said, in burnt umber up to the top, let it run. I'm gonna add some water. And I just kind of wanted to mute that whiteness down just a little bit, moving that art journal out from the back so I don't create a huge mess on that, and I would be very sad. And I'm just giving it some sprays of water and letting that ink move. Like I said, I just didn't want it to be so, so bright white. I needed it to have a little bit of brown to the project. I'm just using that excess ink that I had on my craft mat there and I'm adding it to the piece and again spraying it with water to get it to the right color that I felt it was going to need. A little bit more water here. It's kind of hard to hang on to the art journal, spray your water and keep it in camera view. So I apologize if I have a bad angle here. 
but um, I like how it turned out, and I definitely was happy that I put that uh, little bit of brown um, onto the page. It um, muted that bright white down just perfectly. And at this point, I'm just kind of um, going with it. I really don't have a huge plan for this, but I do absolutely love those flowers that are on the uh, wood grain background that we created. A little bit more water, and we are going to go on to the next step. And of course, this is going to have to be dry before we do that. Um, we're going to try and add some different types of transfers. And the transfers are um, some rub-ons. And the rub-ons that, that I was trying to use were some flowers. And they are by... I have them here. They are by Faber-Castell, I believe. Let me look. Yes, they are. Um, and I'm also going to use some of those butterflies and bees that I have on my Dress My Craft Transfer Me um, images and just kind of cleaning up my area here a tiny bit so that it is not so confusing and such a mess to you. <clears throat> All right, here are the butterflies and the bees, and it is called that butterfly or bees and flies. And I just chose a few of them that I would like to go on there. I chose that image, that image, and I thought that one, but I end up with a small bee, and you'll see that in the project. So I go ahead and I cut those out um, off camera. And now we are going to put that book back under there since everything is dry and that gives us a sturdy base to work on. So here are the butterflies that I chose, a small bee and then a bee that looks like it's uh, getting the nectar from the flower. Now here's what I'm talking about, mixed media transfers, and this is called flowers, something I've had in my stash for a long time. They're by Faber-Castell, and um, they're rub-on transfers. Well, um, I'm not sure if they just didn't work because they were so old in my stash, or it was the type of paper I was using, or what have you, but... I left the little problems that I had here in the project and sometimes people comment that they like to have those um, little problems to see how they get fixed. So here I'm positioning the bees and the butterfly on my art journal page and seeing where I want them to um, be created. I just peel off that front plastic stick the little image down where I would like it and then I'm going to add the water to the back of the transfer and then slide that piece off gently. They are um, semi-rugged but um, they, they do need just a little um, type of gentleness with them. That little bee up there is adorable. <laughs> and then I'm going to put the um, butterfly in the middle there, I'm peeling off that plastic. And going for that, giving it a little stick down. I think this is where I would like it. And giving it some water, and you will see what happens. I was a little bit too rough with it, or I did it too early or I wiped too much water off. I am not sure what happened. But unfortunately, it did not work for me and it was a waste of a butterfly, but that's okay. It's a learning curve first time, you know, for doing this. And as you can see, I um, saved the day. I just kind of embraced the 
problem and pulled it right off with my fingers as I saw it was not going to stay stuck on. And I didn't have too much of the black um, image left on my art journal piece. And um, I'm looking at the piece right now. And I can honestly say that I don't see any of that um, black oops on there. So you, you can definitely work around it and make it work so that the um, next image is going to go over the top of that. So I went on to the other B and I wanted that B looking like it was going to um, be um, sampling the nectar from the dahlia there from the center of the flower gave it some water there and gave it a nice gentle tap with my finger and was removing it and it did turn out but it seemed like on this one I had a little bit too much of that clear plastic on the back so um you probably won't be able to see um, 100%, but I'm kind of pulling it off with my finger. And then I actually did use my um, pen blade and go in and actually kind of cut around the image very carefully because I didn't want to cut that uh, flower. And I did kind of pry that away. Now, here was my idea with these rub-ons. I really wanted to put them on this um, project, but like I said, they just would not stick to what I was doing here. I'm going to speed this up, but you'll see that I had definite problems here. So you usually put down the um, rub on and you can see which side is going to come off the plastic and you use um, like a popsicle stick. Usually there's one in the package, but like I said, this was very a very very old um, item in my stash and then I went to a um, kind of a dry embossing um, tool and I thought maybe that would work but it just was not transferring I'm not sure if it was the watercolor paper the type of paper and I went back to the popsicle stick. It just was not working. I thought, well, maybe if I went to a different piece of rub-on and put it on the other side, maybe that would work. I was really wanting to have that on there. Um, I did set those um, rub-ons aside, and I'm going to try and use them on a card project and see if it was the paper and maybe get the use out of that. And if it's not... If it doesn't work, they're going to go in the garbage. You know, that's just what you have to do. Unfortunately, maybe I'll try and reorder them and um, see if they're any better. Like I said, they were very, very old. But I love the black flowers. Isn't that just gorgeous? Wouldn't that have been really neat there? I just couldn't make it happen. So on to plan B. It's always, you know, on to something. So... I had some Tim Holtz rub-ons in my stash. And again, these are very old. And these are called um, just words, sentiment rub-ons by Tim Holtz Ideology. And one of the words that was calling to me on this sheet was imagination. And as I was cutting that word out, I could feel that they were very, very sticky. So I'm thinking to myself, ooh, these might work. These rub-ons might work. So I'm trying to find placement. And I thought it looked real good right there. Um, I wish I would have straightened it a little bit, but it's a little crooked. Doesn't bother me 100%. Um, just thinking that I'm going to use the popsicle stick to get it on there. Um, it's not working very well. So I thought, okay, going to go and use that um, dry embossing tool that I had used. It's on the left there. And then I go ahead and start rubbing it on. And you can see when a rub-on starts to work. They actually turn 
a little bit like white because you know that the black is transferring on to your project. And I wanted to get a little bit closer look for you here. And I hope that you can see my hands are a little bit in the way here. But uh, I am going to zoom in for you so you can see a little bit better of the um, image, how it's kind of turning white. And if you haven't ever used a uh, rub on, it, it's um, a fun type of thing. So you can see how that one's so much lighter than the real dark black on the left hand side. And um, yeah, these images, uh, rub ons worked. So I was really excited about that. And I really, really like the um, the sentiments and things that I got to work on the page. I am going to speed up this process because I put a lot of this down and I don't want this video to be way too long. All right, so you can see the imagination worked and now I'm going to go ahead and place that last butterfly in the middle there so I can decide where to put my other rub-ons on the piece. I wanted to put like lots of words around the um, flowers because um, that's just what was calling to me. And as you can see, that butterfly did cover up the problems that I was having there. Um, peeling that black tape off of the edge so that I know how far I can go over. And I'm using that dry embossing tool to put all of those words down on the piece. And the words that I'm putting down, they say imperfection, the good, journey, heal, cherish, life, always and forever, found art, tell your story, collector of memories, discover your curiosity, do much good, the sweetest thing, and I just kept going on and on all around the piece until I felt that it was balanced. And it was really, really um, rewarding for me to be using up these rub-ons that have been in my stash for years. I don't know why I just get such a big kick out of that, using up things that are in my stash. I guess it's because I really, really enjoy um, all of the new products and I feel... I shouldn't be buying new products if I have so much in my stash. So I was super excited to go ahead and use like a half of this sheet up on this project. And I really like how it turned out too. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you use rub-ons or if you've used these transfer sheets, I would love to know how you like them and, and what projects you've made. I would Super like to hear from you. <coughs> Excuse me. And we also have a Facebook group called Everything Paper and Glue. And I will link that below for you if you want to join. Just don't forget to answer the questions so I can let you in the group. All right. I think I've got it set. And on to the next. I felt that I needed to cover the whole project with some matte medium. And that is because I didn't want those letters and the butterflies and the bees to peel up. So I put quite a bit down and I'm carefully going over the whole piece, giving it a nice seal so that we can do a couple of finishing touches and this project will be done. I hope it wasn't too long of a video for you. Um, I really enjoyed the process and um, I was super excited how it turned out and I totally appreciate you stopping by my channel. Would love to have you share this video. Maybe someone else would enjoy it and definitely would love to have you subscribe and stop back next Thursday for another project. I um, have no idea what I'm going to be doing, 
but I'm guessing that it'll probably have something to do with flowers and gardening and bees because that has been my total inspiration for um, the last few projects. And um, be sure to check out some different videos that I may have in um, the videos below. Giving this a good dry. And here it's how, here's how it turned out. So I want to put that black edge around the border. And that's kind of my thing. I really think it pulls it together. So I'm being really careful because, like I said, this is the very first page of my art journal. And it's kind of difficult to do when that first page is so bent over like that. I didn't want to create a black mess on my second page there. So I am giving that um, page just that black line again with that tape so I can go ahead and um, use that as a guide to um, put down my black chalk writer is what I use for this process. You can use a black marabou crayon. You can use a black soot distress crayon by Tim Holtz. Any of those items are um, perfectly fine for this. I feel that I like to have something, a product that is um, a little creamy so that I can move it with my finger and um, blend it right in so that the background um, edge looks like it's finished and complete. Um, I do this with a lot of my projects. So if you've seen any of my other videos, it is probably nothing new to you. And I can link those um, project or products, excuse me, to you um, below. And sometimes I forget to link some of those things. You just leave me a comment and I get back to everyone with all of my comments. I think that it's very, very important to um, answer your questions or listen to the things you like or dislike. And that helps me um, put out good videos for you so that we are not wasting each other's time. Me by making them and you by um, watching a video that you do not like. I love the comments and the feedback and I appreciate that. So the project's almost done here. I wanted to get rid of that black uh, chalk writer so I don't smudge my art journal so much. And my thought was I need a little bit of white on this project to make it pop. So I grabbed out my modeling paste and I'm trying to get the cover off. It was stuck on. Like I said, I'm not very um, good with cleaning off the edges. And I'm just going to put that down with my um, stencil. The stencil I used is called Burlap, I believe. Yes, Burlap. It is by Tim Holtz. And um, it's one that I use quite a bit. I'm using just a plastic palette knife and putting down some of that modeling paste in three areas, creating that visual triangle and a little bit of my paste uh, smushed through to the back. So I wanted to give that a little bit of wipe before I did it again in another area so I could have crisp, clean um, stenciling here. And again, three areas is how I did it with my white modeling paste and a plastic um, palette knife. And I really, really like how this added the dimension and yet the um, white pop of color on all of that background. I hope you enjoyed. There are going to be up close pictures at the end. Feel free to leave a comment. I'd love you to subscribe and use some of those links if you need to to find some fun project products, excuse me, for your projects. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again next Thursday 
with another mixed media art journal page, or you never know, maybe something else, something different. Thanks for stopping. Bye now.